Hello everybody, my name is Justin. Welcome back to the studio. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a leather dress belt. So if you want the plans for this, head to the first link in the description below, and I'm going to show you the plans, the hardware, and the leather. Let's get into it. Okay, so your plans for this one include the standard strap end with the holes. If you want to do a different end, you can go for it, but it includes the standard English point for this one. It includes the chap or the chape guide that has the center mark for your buckle and then all the necessary uh, perking marks, perking holes. This is a 3.38 millimeter spacing. So you have, if you have a different spacing, just simply start from the center point and then you work your way up to get everything lined up correctly. I've also included the belt shape guide so that you know exactly where to place your shape on the belt strap. As well, I've included this shape window guide. So if you happen to be using an embossed leather like I am, you can make sure everything's positioned perfectly with your little window guide. So that's what the plans include. The hardware I'm using is a one inch roller buckle. I think this one's from Buckle Guy. And then the keeper for this is going to be made, it's going to be made up of these three rectangular pieces. So those are going to sit beside it and that'll look really nice. In terms of the materials for this one, like I said, I'm using this really cool embossed veg tan. I'm also going to line it with Delaro, super thin, and then backing it up to add a bit of reinforcement. I've got some very thin Veladon. This stuff's already got the sticky back on it, so it makes it really handy just to stick it down. And it's only 0.2 millimeters thick, so it adds no thickness, but prevents anything from stretching out. Black thread, super fine, Maasai 0.45 linen thread, and then I'll just going to use some black edge coat to paint the edges, which are raw. So step one, we need to work on the strap. Starting with our strap, we're gonna start here because there's a little bit more prep work needed than there is on our chap or shape. Still not sure how you say this. What we're going to do is line our belt with some Velodon just to ensure it doesn't is not going to stretch out over time. Before we do that, I'm going to show you how to measure a belt length that has a shape, chap, shape, shape, chap. Not sure. So normally you're going to take your belt, measure from the center hole to the end of your belt buckle. That's your total length. We're essentially going to do the same thing, except our chap is going to overlap a portion of our belt. So we need to cut the belt strap shorter by the length of the buckle. So our overall strap is going to come up right to the bottom of our buckle. The chap goes on there. It all gets stitched together. So. My length is 33 inches to the center hole. So 33 inches from here to here, I'm gonna take off one inch for the length of my buckle, and I'm gonna cut my strap to 32 inches. Hopefully that makes sense. Not that complicated, but it is slightly different than a more standard or, or simpler construction style belt. So with that out of the way, let's start getting this thing line. So to start, uh, you're going to want your belt blank one inch wide by whatever your rough length is. So this one gives me enough. I'm going to line the whole thing and then I'll chop the ends after it's all lined. So if you don't have Velodon, that's fine. You can either use something else or skip this step. But because mine is got a sticky back on it, Makes it very easy 
to apply. So getting the back off is probably the most challenging part. So I don't have a single piece that is long enough. So I'm just going to do two strips. And I'm gonna try to make this edge as square to the belt as I can get. And then peel off a bit of this. I'm not gonna peel off the whole thing. Just peel back a few inches. And then trying to center your reinforcement as much as you can. You can also flip it around. Sometimes this is a bit easier. Peel a bit back. Peel a bit back and then keep working your way down until you've got it fully lined. Then we'll add our actual lining with our glue. If you have one of those rollers, you can go ahead and roll that out as well. I just use my glass slicker. I'm going to trim this down roughly so I'm not going to have this sticky stuff all over the place, which just makes it a little more difficult to work with. The glue I'm going to use for this is Eco Stick 1816B. And just get this little silicon mat down to prevent some of the glue from getting all over the bench. And this is pretty straightforward. Spread it on full coverage, both my straps, both my landing straps, my main strap, stick it together. <clears throat> Nothing, uh, not rocket science here. Best of intentions, am I right? So again, we wanna make sure one of our ends is square so that when we put this on, these two seams come together properly. So just lining up my strap with the, my grid marks. Make sure that goes on nice and square. So that when we come back with this piece,
Oh, it's a little awkward. I'll bump that right up, making sure our piece is nice and tight against there and mostly centered. Check, we're good. Okay. So there we go. So this is the seam. There it is. So once this gets stitched in and it's on the inside of the belt, you're never going to, you'll never notice it. It won't be an issue. And again, this thing's going to get fully stitched. So there'll be no issues with that coming apart. So now we can take care of one of our ends. So selecting your end, which one you want. If you have a pattern, then the only thing you should really look, kind of look for is where are your holes going to line where are your holes going to land so in this case I have the larger scales here so if I position my belt and there they're going to line on the, they're going to land on the large scales over here if I do that some of them will land on the smaller scales uh, functionally it's it's a it's an emboss so there's no structural issues Visually, I like it better to land in this section because then it's kind of bordered with the smaller scales. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. So I'll just line up my jig or my guide. Try to get a nice deep scribe line to follow with my knife. Got a fresh sharp, sharp blade. That is our belt end. So then from there, we can make our marks for the belt loops. So I'm just eyeballing the center of each one of these. And then you can also do, if it's difficult to see those line, those marks, which this one's a little difficult to see. Where is my center? It's right there. Just take a pen and mark your lining. Mark your line in, and then you can measure from this point, in my case, 32 inches. So I come down to this end. So I'm going to line up my belt end here, and I know my overall distance is 33 inches, but I need to subtract one inch for my belt buckle. So I'm going to chop this off at 32 inches. And 
there's my belt cut and trim to length and while we're at it we may as well punch our belt holes so we just want to line up our guide with the very end that we just cut take our belt punch make sure it is centered within that guide hole if you want you could tape this pattern down so that it doesn't move on you So the next step is to punch our stitching holes and get our belt stitched up. And just like that, it, four hours have passed for me since filming that clip. So I ended up cutting my first blank too short. So I had to remake it. And then I was out for the afternoon, stopped filming. And here we are filming on a late Thursday afternoon, which is not normal. Normally my video is edited. It is now actually uploading right now as we speak, the video that you watched last week. So let's get back to this belt and hopefully I can get it stitched by the end of the day. Okay, so with the holes punched, what we can do now is mark the opposite end with a trim to length. We can mark where our shape is going to stop. So using my guide here, butt it up with the end, bring your shape pattern, line it up with that mark, and then remove that bottom piece. And now you can go ahead and trace the belt loop end so we know where to rough up the leather and more importantly where to stop our stitching so we have that might be able to see that mark there kind of sorta so we got our mark right there so we know when we run our stitch line we're gonna come right up just past that line just like I've marked on the pattern we want to go back one to one tooth mark so we don't see this full stitch so it's completely covered once we put our chap on top so our stitch line distance is four mil from the edge so I'm going to go ahead run that all the way around punch this and then we can get the stitch in but before we do that uh, i am going to dye the inside of all of my belt loops so i'm just going to use my awl dip it in the dye and then just rub it in there so you don't see that unfinished interior
Once you've got your belt all punched all the way down, you're gonna to wanna to come to the end. Use your belt shape guide. Line it up with that mark you had made previously. And then mark in your stitch holes. You wanna mark these now and punch them now so that when you actually stitch the shape in place, these holes are already marked. Makes it a lot easier to do now than attempting to put the shape in place and punch all the way through all of the layers. So now I can go ahead and punch straight through there. So that when my shape is punched and in place, the holes are already through. They're punched on this side, punched on this side, fold it over, and then I'm essentially doing just a simple uh, double punch, double stitching with no casting through my shape. Stitching a belt, don't try to do it in one go. Just grab an arm's length of thread, cut it, and then whenever you run out of thread, stop stitching, back stitch, get a new length, start again. It's not worth trying to do the longest thread you can. You're not going to get this in one single thread. Why technically you could, but you would be pulling so much thread through to get this in one continuous line for the sake of having it in one continuous line. It's not worth it. Just do it in arm's length runs and then back stitch and then start again. To my recommendation, that's what I'm going to be doing for this. I'm using a Masai super fine linen thread for this. So I will be gluing each end. If you're using a wax thread, you could just melt it and you'd be perfectly fine. You would have no worries about that stitch ever coming undone. And another factor, if you do happen to have to fix that stitching on the belt and you only have a run that's an arm's length, you can pull those stitches and just restitch that section. If you do it all at once or larger lengths, you have to replace all of that. Not that your stitching is likely to fail, but it's good to know that down the road, if it happens, it's way easier to fix if you're just doing arm's length runs versus longer. Okay, so we've got the belt is now all stitched up. It took me, I don't know, an hour and a half, I think, to stitch this thing. I have gone through I've sanded the edges up to 320. I've done the same with my shape. I've also dyed the edges on this one. I've given it the first coat. So now I'm going to dye the edges on the belt. Once I've got that first edge coat on, I'll then hit it with the Dremel at 600 to flatten it out. And then if I need to restain it, I'll restain it and then finish it with tokenol and a canvas cloth. I'm using the Phoebe's edge coat, black, nothing fancy there. And I found these like, I think they're actually like little makeup brushes or something. I find these things work pretty well for applying edge dye. One thing on the Chape, chap, however you say it, add the dye on the inside because when you fold this over, if you happen to see on the inside, you wanna make sure that's black. You don't wanna see the natural color of the leather. So I dye the inside of this one as well. The belt obviously is lined. We don't have to worry about that. There's nothing fancy about this process. Whatever applicator you're using, just spread on your dye. Make sure you don't get it on the faces. If your edge coat is not the same color as your face, 
or in this case black, black's gonna blend in pretty well. So I probably won't really see it. And I can just wipe it off. Any excess that does bleed over won't, uh, won't stain the front. One thing I like about this edge coat is because it's so watery, it wipes off really nicely. At least black on black it does. I also bevel the edges, so I'm making sure the any exposed edge on the front because of that bevel is dyed. Now I do have to consider that because this is a, a, um, an embossed print on the front, you can see the the um, what you say the natural color underneath. If you can see the edge there, probably not, but you can kind of see the color on the front because I've beveled it. So just make sure you get dye on the front if you need it. And this style dress belt needs a little more care and attention than kind of the standard one where you're just maybe edge burnishing. I want to make sure all the little details are covered. But I'll just work my way around, get this die on there, let it dry. It's probably going to be dry by the time I get, this side will be dry by the time I get down the other side. So I'll probably be able to jump right into the 600 sandpaper. I'll do the same thing for the cheap. And once that's all done, we'll come back again. We'll punch the holes in our cheap. And then it's basically assembly time. I'll show you the stitching of the tape, just how I go about doing it. The stitching itself is fairly straightforward, but there's a bit of an order of operations, if you will. So let me get this edge coat on and we'll come back once that's all done. <clears throat> Okay, so my chap is punched. You can see the holes in there, probably not. Um, that's pre-punched on both sides. And then the belt, edges, they are And the belt edges are all done. They're all nice and polished. I didn't show you the, I don't think there's a need to show you the sanding because it's a whole lot of this. And the edge polishing, it's a whole lot of this. But now that these are our straps done, cut to length, stitched, edges finished, chap is done, we are ready to do the final assembly. So let's get our stitching pony set up and I'll show you the order of operations to get all the hardware installed. Okay, so our order of operations here is that we're going to Put our chap around the buckle. Make sure if you have one face that's maybe better than the other, the orient it now, because you're gonna stitch this in. So what we're gonna do is stitch this line 
and that line first to the belt to lock that in so that our two ends are open. Once that's in place, we can then bring our D rings, slide them underneath and then stitch that piece to lock it all together. We're going to back stitch twice. The only thing to remember about the double punch in is that you don't cast. So after we've back stitched twice. stitching forward, we're just pulling straight through, we're not casting. The reason we're not casting is because obviously we punch the other side straight through, or we punch from both sides, so our hole on the opposite side is facing towards us, which means it's going to pull that thread automatically up to the top of that hole versus if we had punched straight through, it would be facing up and away like it is on our front side. So we essentially have two front sides, which means no casting. So this is a standard stitching process up to this point. Double back stitch. We'll come back when both of these two front stitches are done, and then we'll jump over to the front part. So there's the first row done. I'll now do the second row and then we'll finish off with the end cap. So last part of this process, installing the D rings or keepers, I guess they would be called. So mine are going to go in the front. So they're only underneath the uh, top layer of leather. You could, if you wanted, slide them through the belt and have them on the bottom layer. But I think I like the idea of this being flat because this is the part that's sitting on the body. So it's a little more comfortable that way. That's on the bottom. Versus being on the top. I'm not sure actually. <clears throat> if I look at it this way. Hmm. You know what? I actually like it on the bottom. I can do it on the bottom. Game time decision. Okay. So, slide these things on. <clears throat> one thing I actually can do, one thing I'm going to do, is actually grab a piece of tape. Because these things are, as you can see, they're a little much to manage. Mm 
and there we go. So now I just have to deal with one loop, which is a lot easier. So, depending on how stiff and how firm the leather is, this part, you may need to consider your plans and where this last hole stops. This is probably, I don't know, maybe a millimeter tighter than I would actually like it to be, but it will work once I get this wedged over and loosen up this leather a little bit. It will be able to stitch through there, but you may want to test this before you start such before you make your your punching holes how thick is your keeper and do you need to adjust the spacing left well in this case that stays the same so you'd adjust this one so i could have just dropped out this last hole that i punched here on this side and that would have shoved this over giving it a little bit more room but we will make this work keep that in mind though the thickness of your keeper if you're using these plants. Okay. And here we go. Back stitching twice as usual. Even up my thread. And now we'll just stitch around as normal. Okay, there we go. Let's look at these stitches hammered down. tape off and there is our finished buckle triple uh, rectangular ring for the D rings I'll stitch in place. I did stamp a nice logo there. Looks pretty good. Happy with how that turned out. pretty good it holds itself in place so if a person's wearing this without extra belt loops this still holds holds down it's not flopping all over the place there you go so hopefully yours turned out something like that Pretty good. Okay, that wraps up this dress belt. Hopefully yours turned out great. If you want to get the plans, link in the description below. If you are now a member, you can get this plan for free. If you're in the leather worker perk, 
still learning my three different perk levels. You can get this plan for free along with all of the other previous plans that I've published here on YouTube. Anything that's paid, second perk level, you get those all for free. Discount code is given to you once you subscribe. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, head over to my website, norfolkhandmade.com. You can see all the latest plans and wallets that I've released that are ready to ship. And be sure to check out the limited time offers that I have available in the description from some of my favorite suppliers. As of this video, they're all currently offering 10% off with the code NORFOLK10, either at checkout or email them uh, directly if the code does not work in the checkout box. As usual, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.